In the previous module, we added a mixer to this project and we also gave it a name. Now let's take a look at some of the other tabs within the settings of the stack. You'll also notice there's a GPIO tab. And with the GPIO, you, can, you will have four pins on the back of the mixer. And each one of those pins, you can make them work accordingly. Can they be an open collector output, powered logic output, or a logic input? So depending on how you want to use that pin, you could actually do the drop down for those. Under network, you will have DHCP, which is by default, but you could use a static IP for that particular mixer if you wanted to. And they would just put that information in there. Since this is a 128VD, the V being VoIP, you will also have settings for VoIP. There's a VoIP port uh, IP settings, VLAN settings as well. As well as under the VoIP tab, you will notice that there is QoS information, timers, audio, proxy information one and two. Now, these are all settings that you would get from the IT specialist within the company you're working with. Uh, there is a worksheet that we have that, that you can use to have them fill it out. And then you would just simply put that information into this section. Same thing with the IP phones themselves, because you may have multiple lines. You can have up to five lines per mixer. Uh, be aware though that as you go past the default of two, you would start to get into, you would have to enable these with this UA enable. And if you did that, you would be able to add these additional lines. Be aware though that as you add the lines, your concurrent calls per line would reduce. By default, the one and two, you would get five calls per. If you had three calls, uh, three lines, you would get go down to four co concurrent calls three and two. So it just lets you know that your concurrent calls per line would reduce if you added the additional lines. So this is just a section where you would add the VoIP information. Right under that, you would see add P-Link. P-Links are peripheral type devices like beamforming mics, Dialog 20, USB expander, GPIO expander. These can all set on a p-link and then you just say what's going to actually be on this p-link that's hosted by this 128 vd so i'm going to keep this simple i'll just go ahead and add a beamforming mic but this is where you can rename that as well so i'll say this is a beamforming mic 2 and then i'll underscore say that is in room a so i'll just let that be named that Right under here, you'll see the mounting style. You could leave it auto select, but in the channel properties, you will not be able to see a nice little picture of all the different zones and how they're located. So it's always good practice to go ahead and choose how is it actually being mounted so you'll see that information on the, on the uh, channel properties later on. And you hit OK. So we're going to keep this simple for now. This is a beamforming mic. Also notice that if you did have numerous rooms and you had other mixers to be added to those rooms, you could always go to a C-Link device and the C-Links are the Converge Pro 2 products and you could just add another one. So I could say I want a, a 48T with Telco. It can be in another room. Uh, I need a 128T Telco model in another room. You could uh, have these mixers giving their resources and spread those out through all the different rooms. So that's where you could add numerous ceiling devices. But in the stack, that's basically it, where you would then add a mixer, change the settings, rename it. How do you want the GPIO and the VoIP to work? And then you could also add P-Link devices. Back in the general tab, you will notice that there's also a section for P-Link devices here to use long distance P-Link. If you use this, this is only available when there's three or less beamforming mics allocated. So in this case here, I'm just using the one beamforming mic. And typically it is 200 feet or 60 meters between devices. But in this case, if you wanted to use the long distance P-Link, you could check this off. And now you have as much as 650 feet between devices or 200 meters. So this is where you would designate and say if you want to use long distance or not. 